Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a few things I've learned during my latest watercolor journey I've been taking that was originally inspired by Yutaka Murakami's fluffy cats. Just how does he get those gorgeous furred out edges? In celebration of spring and Easter, we'll paint this adorable chick. Reference photo and muse compliments of Jeff Trotter on Flickr.com. So thank you, Jeff, for this beautiful photograph. I'll share some of the breakthrough bits of information that has helped me be more successful with this technique of getting those soft, furry, fluffy edges. If you would like to join me on my artistic journey and get the real nitty gritty on how I paint, join my Patreon where you will get access to a library of about 40 tutorials with new ones being added every month. You'll also get a reference photo, downloadable, traceable, and supply list with each painting tutorial. They usually last about an hour to two hours with several video sessions that are in real time so that you can paint along with me without commercials. Higher tiers get quarterly paint dots, art supplies, originals, and critiques while supplies last. If you're on Facebook, come join my Rachel Parker watercolor workshop and join my ever-growing community of watercolor painters where we share our work, give and take advice, and in general, have a great time geeking out on watercolor. Let's get started with how I created these soft furry edges. So one of the keys to success with this technique is to use the right paper and the right paint, the right brushes with the right amount of water. You've got to get a lot of things right. That's why I've had so many fails. Just look at all these other paintings that I've done to create these furry edges. I've practiced and practiced and practiced. I've done so many paintings to practice this technique and I really feel like this chick is the one where I got it all right. I got it exactly the way I wanted it to, but it took a lot of work and practice. So I'm going to show you this one clip in real time, not sped up because it is key to success. So you see I'm using a big brush and am I dabbing at it? No, I'm not. If you dab at it, what happens to the paint when you lift your paintbrush up off the paper? It explodes out in all directions. Try it and you'll see what I mean. So in order to get soft furry edges that are where you want them, you have to keep the brush moving along the edge of the chick. And I showed this also in my cat tutorial complete with a demonstration by Patrick Swayze. So be sure to check out that video right here and I'll link right up here in the right corner. Uh, so I'm using Arsh Cold Press 140 pound. That's another key to success is using good watercolor paper. A lot of watercolor papers will work. If you guys follow me, you've heard me talk about the white Watson paper from Japan, which because of my tutorials have gotten very expensive. Apparently a lot of you went and bought that paper and now it's just ridiculously expensive. Uh, and the only source that I could find was on Amazon, although my Patreon students have shared with me a couple other sources in Canada, but it's hard to come by. So I turned to the cheaper, celly, all, also cellulose-based paper called Fluid. So that seems to work really well too and readily available here in the US. And it's Fluid watercolor paper. That works well. Arsh Cold Press 140 pound works well. Any cold press, 100% cotton watercolor, paper will work. Another key to the success of this technique is to use the right paint. And so far, I have not found any other paint that furs out like this, where you get those little strands of fur. It actually looks like little furs going out into the background. The only paint that I've found does this is Lamp Black. <laughs> Who knew Lamp Black was so special? but it really does have this really special effect. And you can get really soft furry edges with other paints, but they won't fur out like this, where they have little strands of soft fur going out into the background. So you can't use student grade lamp black. You have to get Winsor & Newton professional quality lamp black, or like what I used in this painting, which I love, this paint is by Daniel Smith. and. It is um, even better than Winsor & Newton. Winsor & Newton lightens up a little bit. It has a drying shift, which means as it dries, it gets lighter. But this um, Daniel Smith Lamp Black does not lighten up nearly as much as the Winsor & Newton. It stays dark, but it also furs out. Now the Winsor & Newton furs out even more, 
but the Daniel Smith furs out and stays dark for a really good compromise between staying dark so you have those nice high contrast edges where the chick is, stays white and the background stays really nice and dark and it really makes a nice effect and it also furred out. Another tip to, that is key to success is you cannot paint small with this technique. Be sure to check out my friends Agnes Bedore's watercolor uh, channel. She does cats with this technique and she talks a lot about this how if you want something to fur out you need to give it room because as it furs out it kind of grows and now this painting here is an 8 by 10 so that's the smallest you can go but the subject is small and simple so it worked for this painting but like with a cat you're gonna want to work at at least an 11 by 14 she works 20 inches or larger so be sure to check out her techniques and she has a lot of good tips as well as far as the yellow and the chick, it doesn't matter. I used Daniel Smith Indian Yellow, a beautiful yellow, which I also used in my recent video about painting abstracts for just relaxing. So be sure to check out that. And I loved how the Indian Yellow and the Lamp Black interacted together. So that's why I chose it for this painting. But Oriolan, uh, be sure to get Holbein Oriolan though, because other Oriolans often are not light fast, but Holbein's Oriolan is. And I noticed lately when I was uh, sharing links with my Patreon students where to get some of these supplies. But anyway, it doesn't matter what yellow or orange or red you use in this painting, but the important thing, the important paint to use is that Daniel Smith lamp black. But uh, an another final tip that is key to success is to get the whole painting wet. The only thing I didn't get wet were the eyes and the legs where I wanted hard edges and the beak of course but everything else started out with a wet glistening surface if you haven't seen my video about different levels of moisture in your paper then be sure to check out my calico cat tutorial at about minute 330 I talk about different levels of moisture in your paper and for this technique, you have got to use glistening paper that has dried a little bit, but isn't in the buckling stage yet, because that paint needs to move around quite a bit in order to be able to fur out or fluff out like this. So I would love to see any of your results. So I hope that you will join me on my Facebook group. I really love to see. So I hope you'll share. And thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe because I upload new tutorials every week and I will see you next week. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.